Hello all. Just a quick video today because I'd like to talk about something that's been in the news lately. You may have seen a number of news reports about a British railway wagon, sometimes identified as a railway carriage or railway car, that was recently dug up in Antwerp. It is apparently nearly a hundred years old, and was too rotted to save disintegrating in the process of recovery. But how did it get there, the newspapers wonder? Some reports even state that LNER, the company that apparently built the wagon, have expressed bafflement. The thing is, nobody seems to have bothered to ask any railway historians, or even any rail enthusiasts. Because any of those people could have told you that there is absolutely no mystery here at all. What we are looking at in these stories is not a railway carriage or wagon at all, but a railway container. The company that built this was the London and North Eastern Railway, or LNER, which existed from 1923 to 1948. So that gives us a clear range of dates for the object. Someone who knows more about the LNER's liveries could probably narrow it down even further, but it ain't me, babe. This container was used for carrying furniture. You see, in the era of the LNER, just about every railway station had a goods siding. Most long-distance overland goods were transported by rail. So what railway companies would do is they would offer a removal service. You'd get your stuff loaded into a container like this, which would be driven on a rail-owned lorry or cart to the nearest station. It would be loaded onto a flat wagon at the goods siding, usually referred to as a conflat or container flat, and the wagon would be hitched to a goods train that was going to where you were moving to. Then it would be unloaded at the other end, and the same thing would happen in reverse, and welcome to your new home, sir or madam. These weren't just used on the company's own lines, they could end up anywhere. Railways did send their goods internationally, either by running the wagon onto a train ferry, or, as I suspect is more likely in the case of this container, just putting the cargo on a ship. Doubtless, if some enterprising or very bored historian looked through the records, they'd find somebody who moved house from somewhere on the LNER network to Antwerp, possibly via one of the East Coast ports. Even before the Channel Tunnel opened, railways operated internationally. At Liverpool Street, you can see a relief picture of a ship in the brickwork. And at Blackfriars, you can see a list of destinations for which, at the very least, you'd have to change trains. Why is the container still there? Your guess is as good as mine. Perhaps it was structurally unsound and the LNER didn't want it back. Perhaps it simply got lost. Wagons and containers existed in their thousands, so some inevitably went astray. Perhaps it was sent over just before the Second World War, then got stuck there. As for why the present-day LNER couldn't add any further information, well, it's not the same company. It's just a company with the same name. You might as well go into McDonald's and ask them about Ramsay McDonald's politics. So I'll admit, we don't know exactly how that container got to Antwerp, nor why it's still there. But it's not some Bermuda Triangle-style mystery. More likely, it's just carelessness and red tape that means there was a British railway container in Belgium. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, please do leave a like and consider subscribing for more. I would like to thank my donors on Ko-fi, on Patreon, and here on YouTube for your support. You are the flat truck to my container. And I'll see you all again very soon. Cheerio.